Hey guys, Dr. Eddie Dona, Specialist Plastic Surgeon. This is my second video on breast lift, lift surgery and I have three videos on this particular topic because it is a complex topic. In this particular video I'm going to be talking about the different surgical options available for those who are wanting and needing a breast lift. First thing to remind everyone is that a breast lift simply means lifting up the breast tissue and nipple position so it's sitting in a higher, better position and therefore creating a better breast shape. Now, as far as doing a breast lift is concerned, there are three types of breast lift scar patterns required, or that, that are available, I should say. And they all vary based on, of course, this type of scar pattern, from mild to significant. Now, the first is a donut or circumariola or Benelli technique, and basically that, they all refer to the same thing. And that's where there's a, a scar around the entire areola. And that's the only scar you have. And this can be used for, is used for very mild lifts. Um, it can also be used for um, reducing the areola size. But of course it does have significant limitations and it can be overused and used badly which results in significant problems. So it does have a finite uh, application. The other thing is if you're doing it simply to reduce the areola size and at the same time you're using implants, then it's not going to be terribly effective because by trying to reduce the areola size and at the same time putting implants in, then you're doing two completely counterproductive things. You're trying to make the areola smaller, whilst at the same time making the breast bigger, putting the entire breast under tension. The weakest part of the breast is the areola, so in the end, you make the breast bigger, and whilst you're trying to reduce the areola, it stretches back out because it, it loses the tug of war between the thick normal skin and the areola skin. So that's not a very sensible thing to be doing. Um, so it does have a limited applications and also it can uh, result in a very flat um, breast profile. The other scar technique is a lollipop technique. And this basically refers to a scar around the areola and from the lower areola border straight down and vertically down to the um, lower breast fold. Um, hence the lollipop, lollipop pattern. Now this is required for or used for when I mean, obviously a greater breast lift is required um, to lift things up. It can also be utilised or um, take away some of your natural breast tissue on that vertical scar as well. And the final um, scar pattern is an anchor scar and that is required obviously when there's a much bigger lift required. So same as lollipop there's also an additional scar along the lower breast fold, lower breast curve for unfold I should say. Um, now that is of course required for greater lift and also when there's quite a long distance from the nipple to your lower breast fold that scar along the lower breast fold is basically necessary to reduce that length so you're taking out a wedge of your lower breast tissue um, and it can also be utilized for making the breast um, substantially smaller as well so they're the three scar patterns um, that can be used for the different types of breast lifts with or without implants now, of course, when someone's wanting and needing a lift, often they want extra volume. And that would generally mean uh, implants, although it can also mean fat transfer, which is a separate video which I'll discuss um, another time. So we're talking about implants here. So when someone needs a lift and wants implants, there are a number of options available for that. Now, the first option is when someone's got sort of mild, sort of borderline sort of sag, the first option is to simply do a well-planned and performed augmentation. By doing that and doing it properly, many times on those select individuals, you can end up res um, creating a substantial lift without the need for scar lift uh, or breast lift scars. In other words, the only scars in the lower breast fold as per routine breast augmentation and ending up with great results, um, which is excellent. So those who are sort of borderline, that's certainly the option to be taken. taken. And worst case scenario, after things have settled in six months and you're finally reviewing your, your final results, if there's still some underboob sag or droopiness, and if it's a concern for that person, then you haven't burnt any bridges. You can go ahead and do a breast lift at a later date. That's not a problem at all. But many of times, um, that's not an issue to the individual, so an augmentation is great. Alone is great. Uh, the other option for those needing a lift and wanting extra volume is to do a combined breast lift augmentation, otherwise known as a mastopexy augmentation. Now, I will say right now that is the most difficult cosmetic breast surgical procedure to do. Um, it has many different uh, potential problems associated with it, and I certainly do offer that and do a lot of those, 
but I select my patients carefully as to who I think is suitable and appropriate and safe to have that done. Um, that being the key thing. Because anyone can have any surgery, it's whether or not it's the safe, safest thing to do and going to consistently give you good results. That's the key thing. So who do I, as a general guide, who do I consider to be suitable for that? Well, there are many variables taken into account and everyone's dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis, but essentially, um, small amount of natural breast tissue, not a major droop, um, is someone who I'd sort of consider doing it as a combined procedure. But with the very clear um, disclaimer that I make sure that every patient is aware of, anyone's getting a breast lift augmentation that I'm offering anyway, I always um, stress the key point that once things have fully settled down after six months, about 20% of those patients would benefit from further surgery to improve the results for a multitude of reasons, ultimately because they're not 100% happy and I'm not 100% happy. And it's like a second fitting of a, um, of a dress, so you get your fine, fine tune the results. It's still an operation, so that needs to be taken into account with all the associated downtime, um, potential costs, etc. So that's not a small number, not all patients need to be aware of that. Now, um, and any patient, any, any surgeon who quotes that's not being real or anything less than that is quite frankly not being terribly honest or has very low standards for what's a good result. Um, so this is, that's one of the reasons why many surgeons don't offer combined or breast lift augmentations because it is an extremely complicated procedure. And in my next video, I'm gonna discuss all the technical issues and why it's such a, uh, a problem operation. But um, now, many patients are not suitable to have it done as a combined procedure. Why? Because it gets to a point where, because of the state of that person's breast, if you try to do it as a combined lift augmentation, the chances that after six months you're going to have to come back and do further surgery to improve the results and to fix problems and then, you know, where you've created problems unnecessarily, it becomes so great that it's not worth trying to do it as one because you're almost certainly coming back beyond six months to fix those problems. So in other words, you have one planned operation, a lift augmentation, and then six or, or more months later on, you're doing a second unplanned surgery with a patient stressed, I'm stressed, we're trying to fix problems. It's not worth it. It's not safe, it's not sensible. It, it, there's no logic in doing that. So this leads us to our third option for those who want a lift and want extra, or need a lift and want extra volume. And that is to do two planned operations. And the first operation, if I'm, if I'm offering this, is to do a breast lift first. This is typically for someone, by the way, who's got a lot of breast tissue, is quite soft and sitting quite low. So do a breast lift first. We sculpt what they've got to create a good breast shape with what they have, and that's it. Focus all our energies on creating a good breast shape. Um, and then let that settle, and after six months, if they still want to be bigger, because many, many of the times they don't want to be any bigger, now, now that the nipple's sitting up high and they've got a good breast shape, um, a, lot of the, a lot of women say, I'm out of here, I'm, I'm happy with that, thank you very much. But if they want it to be bigger, and definitely want it to go ahead, then no sooner than six months from the first operation, it now becomes easy to make what is now a good breast shape, a bigger good breast shape by doing an augmentation. So you do lift first, six or more months later on, you do a well-planned augmentation to enhance what you've got. And that way you're giving yourself the best chance of getting the best long-term results by taking a sensible, safe, um, uh, basically friction-free pathway without all the stress associated with trying to do it all in one go. That's certainly how I would offer it, uh, how I do things when it comes to those who would benefit from a two-planned um, operative approach. Now having said that, there are many surgeons who do that in reverse. They'll say, okay, you need a lift and augmentation, but you know what, I'm going to do an augmentation first, and then six or more months later, I'm going to do a lift. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it that way. Um, so for those surgeons who do it that way, no dramas at all. Um, I prefer to do it the other way around because like I said, certainly in my situations, a lot of the patients after they've had just a breast lift alone, they're just happy with that. They don't end up um, going for an augmentation. But either way, there is no right or wrong. For every uh, surgical process, there's different pathways to get to the final end result. And that's how I take my pathway. Um, and I have very good reasons for that. And I have very good results um, out of doing it that way. Now, now, there are those patients who would benefit from having a lift and one extra volume, but they simply do not want to pay the additional costs, they do not want the additional scarring, they do not want the additional potential problems associated with having a lift and augmentation. All they want is just the fullness in their bra and in their clothing. The reasoning being very simple, 
Everyone sees them in clothing, extremely few see them naked, and with an augmentation alone, they're going to look good, um, they're going to look bustier, look fuller, and look great. Yes, naked, they're not going to look great because they'll have the fullness up here, breast tissue hanging, so it's not going to look great, but for them, as long as they're made aware of that, it's not a big deal. Uh, and for those, as once again, as long as these things are discussed and the expectations are, um, or the realistic expectations are created, there's nothing wrong with doing that either. So in other words, just having an augmentation alone, even though they would benefit from a lift. And worst case scenario, time has passed, and they say, you know what, I like this fullness, but yeah, actually, I do want a lift, I'm now prepared to accept a lift. Cool. Once again, you haven't burnt any bridges, you can have a lift at a later date. So there's no right or wrong, once again, different pathways to get to the same end result. In the end, breast lifts are obviously a very, very difficult procedure, lots of things to discuss, lots of options, lots of um, lots of variables, and all these things need to be discussed to ensure that in the end you have the uh, best chance of getting the best long-term result. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. On my next video, I'm going to discuss... What am I going to discuss? I'm going to discuss why a breast lift augmentation is so incredibly difficult and why few surgeons do it or indeed should be doing it. And that's what we'll chat next. Chat, chat about next. Ciao.